Let's have a look at two dimensional collisions. Sometimes the impulse between two objects can send them off of the original axis between them. So I can show you an example of that with Hal and Al. So I'm going to have my two masses here, and I'm going to have Hal, no, I'm gonna have Al run into Hal. So the heavier mass here, and Al is gonna crash into him, and we'll see what happens. There you go. So you can see it didn't strike quite head on, so it moved off at an angle. That's the kind of collision we're gonna analyze now. So the main thing to know about this collision, like any collision, is momentum is conserved, of course. We're treating these as an isolated system, so the change of momentum has to be zero. But we have to remember that momentum is conserved and momentum is a vector. And now we have things moving off in two different dimensions, so uh, it's conserved in each direction. All right. So what that means is we could say that uh, P X naught equals P X F. So that's the X direction. And then we could say that P Y naught equals P Y F. And these don't mean the momentum of an individual object, this means the total momentum. Right, the total momentum along the x direction, the total momentum along the y direction. So if we're gonna start calculating what these are, we need, to, we, need to, we need some numbers, we need a drawing here. So let me draw what just happened real quick. So we had, uh, we had mass one, we'll say, was coming in at V1 naught, and we had mass two, and V2 naught was zero, it was just stationary. And this is before, and then after they collided, they went off, and I think I had it where mass one came uh, up. Right. Mass one went off like that, V1 F, and mass two went off like that, V2 F. So if we're gonna start trying to write our equations for conservation of momentum, we can say, let's see, along the x direction, the initial was all in mass one, right? It was going this way. So that would be mass one times V one naught. And then the final case, we had two moving, and now we need the x component, so we see we need more. We need the angles. So we'll say mass one went off at theta one. And mass two went off, and I unfortunately put the label in the way, V2F, mass two went off at theta two. So now we can use our powers of trigonometry to see that the x component, the way I've drawn these angles, is the cosine. So it'd be mass one V1F cosine theta. Cosine theta one plus mass two V2F cosine theta two. So we're just considering what is giving us initial momentum in the x, what is giving us final momentum in the x. In the y, let's see, in the y direction, at first there is zero initial momentum. So we must have zero in the y, because originally nothing was moving in the y. So zero would be equal to, and now we get the y components, and the y components for the final are just the sine. Right? So m1, v1, f, sine, theta, one, plus m2 v2 f sine theta 2. So there is your statement of the conservation of momentum. So we could use that to figure out what's gonna happen. And maybe also k might also be conserved. Right? And if k, the kinetic energy is conserved, if it's elastic, or it might not. And that is if it's inelastic. So mathematically, how you would solve this, of course, would depend on the nature of the collision, whether it's an elastic collision or an inelastic collision. So you can imagine this is getting pretty complicated. 
Um, so let's think a bit about how, how can we really solve a problem like this. Can we solve the general problem? Let's think about the general problem. Al approached how. So let's think about all the variables. So we have many variables here. Let's think. We have mass 1. That was Al. We have V1 naught. Uh, we have mass 2. We have V2 naught. Maybe mass 2 could also be moving. And then we have V1 final. And we have V2 final. And those are just speeds. We also need the angles. So we have theta 1 and we have theta 2. So you can see there I've come up with four, four variables that we may have. And how many equations do we have? Well, we have momentum in the x, we have momentum in the y, and we have kinetic energy. The conservation of each of these is an equation. So we have eight equations, uh, or we have eight variables and three equations. Let's see, if you were to set up an experiment and you were going to try to predict what would happen, what would you know? You would know m1, that's a given. You would know m2, that's a given. You would know the initial velocity at which it approached. And since you start out in one dimension, you wouldn't worry about the components of these velocities. You just think of them as speeds. You could always go to a reference frame where this is 0. Even if this one happened to be moving, you could say, well, I'm going to imagine that being stationary. So you can get rid of that one. So these are given. These are the unknowns. Well, how fast and at what angle do the two masses go off at? And that leaves you four unknowns, the speeds and the angles. And how many equations do we have? We only had three. Mm. So is this a simple physics situation that we can't calculate the answer? We don't have the mathematics to solve this? The answer is no. So any time that you roll the balls and only one thing can happen, then there must be equations that can describe that one thing that happens. And in this case, there is an analytical solution. What's happening here is there's a little bit more information you need. If it really is one ball going straight at the other, that is never going to go off in two directions. That's going to be a 1D collision. The extra information you really need is how slightly off was Hal when it approached Al. Really, it's not straight on. Really, it has to be coming off at a slight angle. And that is what sends it off and creates a 2D collision. So there's actually, um, uh, there's actually more information that you need. And when you have that information, then you'd have to think about the impulse and the direction of the forces. Really complicated. So what does this mean for AP Physics 1? Well, so you wouldn't do the complicated case. You would, most problems would be on the simple case, and they'll give you more information. They won't just give you the very basics. They'll tell you the two velocities go off this way. Find the angles. Or they'll tell you, these are the angles. Find the velocities. We'll give you the masses. A lot of the problems really are just trying to get you to apply conservation of momentum, maybe conservation of energy. But they're not trying to solve the general problem, because the general problem, you need more detailed information about the collision.